Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. If you get a chance, subscribe to the channel. It's free. Lots of DIY stuff here. I did create a playlist for those of you that didn't know. Go to the top of the menu. Click Playlist, and this is what you'll see. Now, as you can see here, I do have it set up to make it a little bit easier to navigate for what you need. I did create a playlist that includes Super Beetle and Standard Beetle. Uh, as you scroll down, you'll be able to find exactly what you need without scrolling back for two years or three years or whatever it may be. I'm just trying to make it easier for the viewer. So I hope this simplified things. And that way you can find anything you want without just scrolling forever. I'm doing a valve adjustment video today. Okay, rock arm adjustment, technically speaking, before somebody jumps my butt. And go over a couple other things you really need to know about the rotor and the direction and the, the drive gear, basically. Uh, I did this because the last time I did one was two years ago, and a lot of people don't scroll all the way back or know to go to the playlist. So while I got the engine on the stand, it makes the camera angles much easier to get to. We're going to do that, and then next week I'm going to show you a low-budget way to save money while repairing your heater boxes. Okay, let's get on it. All right, so what we have here is our 1600 dual port, okay? And this will be the same on the 1500 single port. Now, your rocker arm adjustment clearances and measurements may be a little different on some. I gap at six thousandths, some are gapped at four thousandths. So do the research for your motor as to what it should be gapped to. But we're gonna go over it anyhow. This will go for all of them. You just need to find out what gap you should use. And I'm not gonna put a chart up here because it just starts an argument. So first I'm gonna show you something about the distributor drive gear, and then we'll go on and start showing you how to set up for the adjustment properly. Let's do that. Okay, now I will bring you in closer, so be patient. Uh, remember, you know, before you get frustrated watching this, there's people that are new here. So I try to show the basics first, okay? So what you have on your generator or alternator stand is 1432. That is the firing order, okay? And what that means is like number one's here, so 1432. Let me bring you up close. So here's the firing order, one, four, three, two. And that's going clockwise with your crankshaft, okay? And then on your cap, that would be one, four, three, two. All right? But when we do our adjustment for the rocker arms, I'm going to go counterclockwise, okay? Which would be one, two, three, four. And we'll go over that. I'll do this nice and slow so everybody gets it, although most of you know, but it's never hard to have a refresher course. I'm going to show you something very important about the distributor. Okay, right now, and we're going to go over this in a minute with the top dead center and what markings are on the crankshaft pulley, okay? Right now, I have it at top dead center on number one, okay? And I'm going to go over something with you important here. Right now, and I'm going to bring you up close in one second, my rotor is pointed right at number one wire, okay? And what you want to figure out if you have it 180 out or an issue, if you have it at top dead center and number one, the rocker arms are loose to be adjusted and you know you're on number one, but the rotor isn't pointed there, you either have a mechanical distributor without the vacuum advance or your distributor drive gear is installed 180 out. And I'm going to show you that right now. Now, I got you up close here. What I'm going to do is take the distributor out because I want to show you something with that drive gear. All right. And I know this is a valve adjustment video, but this will make sense why I'm showing it. Down behind the fuel pump and distributor, you'll see a 13 millimeter trying to focus on it right down in there. Okay. You're going to remove that first. However, do not loosen the clamp on your distributor. You don't want to untime it. Don't turn your distributor. Only loosen that nut if need be to the hold down like you see here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to remove the cap to get it out of my way basically. You're going to take that 13 millimeter off. 
Okay, give me one second. And I'll explain something I'm going to show you. Maybe it'll help 50% of the people here. I don't know. You're going to gently pull your... Remember, don't turn your distributor back and forth. Keep that part tight. You're just taking off the hold down nut, okay? Now, when you look down inside of here, you're going to see a slot, okay? And it has half moons on each side. Now, one side of the half moon is smaller than the other, okay? Which means... The shorter side of the half moon, the smaller, as you see here in the photo, should be at the rear of the car, closest to the rear pulley, okay? If, in fact, somebody installed the distributor drive gear 180 out, the smaller side of the half moon will be on this side of the motor, right there, okay? And if they did then your rotor is going to be 180 out, okay? So I just wanted to let everyone know that. So I got to put the distributor back in, and you'll notice on the distributor, maybe that'll make better sense. See how one side, the half moon, is smaller than the other? If you had to remove your distributor at this point, okay, go ahead and put it back in. Just give it a couple little turns until it seats, and then you know you're seated, okay? Let's pop the cap back on. Oh, I'm sorry. Why don't we put the nut back on first? Okay, and you want to tighten this down really good, and that's something else I'm going to go over. Come on. There we go. Now, what I'm going to tell you right now is extremely important. Don't get silly on me. When you have this distributor out, never turn that pulley. No, no, no. If you turn this pulley with the distributor out, you're no longer holding the distributor drive gear down. And it has teeth on it like you see here. And if you start turning this around... And that is not in. The drive gear is going to come up a little bit, and you're going to start chewing the gears off of it. Ugh. Right. So, never, never, ever, ever, don't get silly on me. Do not turn this when the distributor is not bolted down tightly. Okay. Just saying. Now, what will you need? You will need a screwdriver, a feeler gauge, and a 13 millimeter wrench. Now, they do sell a special tool. Yeah, that one. I don't really buy them. I never have. But probably it's not a bad idea if you'd like to invest in one. They're relatively cheap. I just do it the old-fashioned way. So let's set up to adjust the rocker arms on cylinder number one. Now, the first thing you're going to do is we're going to want it set up to number one. Okay? So what we have here is we have a dimple on the outer ring. Take a look at this picture here and it'll show you the markings. Top dead center is the outer ring closest to the rear of the car. Okay, and you'll see that dimple there. I already marked mine with white, you know, white out. Take and make a line directly across this and make a mark directly across 180 on the other side of the pulley. That's important. You're going to need to do that. Okay, so we have this here. We have it at top dead center right now. Okay, and how we know it's on number one is let's take the cap off. So you have it lined up at top dead center. Now here is number one wire right here, and I'll show you something. Put your finger here. It's hard because you're not directly down over it. And make sure the rotor is pointed right at where you are. How you're lining up the pulley is you want this dimple to line up with the split in the case. Instead of using my fat finger here, the split in the case. That's where you want the dimple lined up with, okay? What you're gonna notice is the rotor is pointed at that notch in the distributor. Okay, now you are on number one. 
Now it's time to go to number one and adjust the rocker arm. Now number one is the closest to the front of the car on the passenger side and how this works is one, two, three, four. So I hope that made sense. So we're going to put a towel down and we're going to loosen up the valve cover, remove it and adjust. Now I obviously have this on an engine stand for camera purposes and filming. I tilted the motor slightly to get a better view. Okay, this is not hard to do in your car, trust me. Take your valve cover off, have a towel down, should probably get a, get a little oil, possibly. Okay, here is number one, number two, and it's also printed technically on your uh, cooling tins. So let's get this ready here so you can get an idea of where I'm at. We're on number one, we are going to be on those two rocker arms. Now what you're going to do first is break loose, and I already did it so you didn't have to sit here and watch me struggle, break loose these nuts if you are off, okay? So what you're gonna do is take your feeler gauge. I bend mine slightly. They do have some that are already bent, okay? And you're gonna take and slide it between the rocker arm and the valve stem. Now it won't go in there. It's too tight. Whoops. Okay. We're going to loosen this a little bit and you just want a slight drag. That's too tight. Just a slight drag like that. Okay. I usually just leave it hang there for a second. And that's where that tool probably would come in handy. <clears throat> it keeps everything a little easier to get to. Okay. Now check it again. Very slight drag. Okay. Then you're going to go to your next rocker arm. Okay. Let's see where it's at. I can't even get it in there. Okay. We're going to loosen this a little bit. And... Whoop, too tight. There we go. Whoop, because I was pushing on it. There, slight drag. Okay. Your 13 millimeter locking nut. Now watch that you do not turn this while you're tightening the nut or you just have to readjust again. When it's all tight, check it one more time. There we go. There's a slight drag. All right, let's set up to go to number two, and I'll show you how to do that. So we did number one, okay? We're going to reverse counterclockwise to the notch down here that we made a mark on, okay? So we're going to turn it counterclockwise until that mark lines up with the split in the case right about there okay now i'm going to bring you up close so we rotated this counterclockwise we lined up the mark with the case the split in the case so now i'm going to bring you up over top of the distributor so we had one we rotated counterclockwise 180. this should be number two because it's leading over to number two cylinder so let me loosen that sorry number two should be right here and the rotor is pointed at number two. So we know we're right. So let's clip this back on so we don't forget and go over to number two cylinder. Next is number two cylinder. So you have one and then two. So two is to the very far rear on the passenger side. So now what we're going to do on number two is check the gap. And of course, I loosened these up already. I try to cut a little corners so you don't get too bored. Okay. And there's your drag. Okay. And you'll get used to that, what should feel. Okay. And just take your wrench. And I will do this in the car too. I'll do a video of that. I'm just taking advantage of the camera angles right now. Now you tightened it, but every time you do, double check, because even I've moved it before, not that I'm anything special. Slight drag. All right, let's bump along here. See what we have here. Oh, 
Here, let me come for this side. I'm trying not to block you. Oh, that one's okay. All right. So let's put our valve cover back on. Also, before you put your valve cover on, always clean this up really good. I'm just doing a video right now. Clean this up really good and make sure your gasket is good. Okay. And check to make sure this is a little difficult almost to snap in place to make sure it's still, you know, still working good. You can buy new ones. I prefer the original German ones. We did number two, now we're going to number three. So counterclockwise, okay, until we come back up to our mark and the notch and get it, that dimple here, get it right lined up with the case. Let me get in front of you. Sorry, okay. So we've had one, two, we're gonna see if this is pointed to number three, okay? And number three would be back here towards the firewall. Let's take a peek. And yes, it is pointed right at number three on the cap. Okay. And let me show you one more time from over top of it. One, two, three. Unclip, hold your finger there, and it's pointed right at number three. Okay. Just to show you. Sometimes it's better to move the camera around a few times to show you what's going on. Let's remove the valve cover. Mm. Oh, it's been on there a while. No doubt. Wow. Okay. We are on the driver's side of the engine closest to the firewall. And this will be for number three. Okay, so let's put our feeler gauge in and see where we are at. Okay, I already broke the nuts loose. I try to get some stuff out of the way so you're not just sitting here bored. Okay, a little tighter, just a slight drag. All right, tighten up our lock nut. Okay, it moved because I didn't hold the screw. Good, I'm glad I did that on camera. Okay, so let's get the screw turned for adjustment. There's our slight drag. Hold the screw. Pay better attention than I did. Okay, and check nope too tight still see it can happen to anybody let's try again sometimes this can happen it's normal and i refuse to edit stuff like that out okay it's not a perfect world Hold it again. Okay, let's check it. And there we go. There's our nice drag. Okay, go to our next one. Let's see where we're at. I had that turned out. Okay. There, nice drag. Okay, one more. Okay, counterclockwise, one more time. Okay, watch you don't pinch your fingers in here. You can use a wrench if you'd like. Okay, and we are right at the split of the case, pretty close. So line your dimple up with the split of the case. Now we should be on number four, our last one. So this would be one four, three, two, the firing order. So one, four, the rotor should be right there. And it is, okay? So now it's time to adjust number, number four. That didn't come out right, did it? Number four, 
and I'm gonna go over a couple tips while I'm doing this to tell you a few things. Now number four is closest to the rear bumper on the driver's side. So let's check. Okay, we have a slight drag and let's put our screwdriver in there. There we go. And always remember, it's better to have them a little loose than too tight. So say, for example, your gap is six thousandths, okay? Now I have a nice light drag. Say you're a little unsure of yourself, then do it at seven thousandths. I'd rather see it a little loose than a little tight. Now, that doesn't mean you have to. I'm just telling you what I think. If you destroy your motor, well, then you were being silly. Okay, so a little bit of a slight drag. Oops, slipped off. There we go. Take our wrench. Come on. There we go. Almost. Double check after you've tightened the lock nut. And we are good. All right, let's go over a couple things. If in fact, okay, you loosen one of these up, the lock nuts, and the screw will not turn, then remove the rocker arm assembly, heat this up a little bit on the rocker arm, and here, I'll take you over to workbench. Okay, so you have your rocker arm assembly, okay, and you have your stud and your nut. Now, if you ever strip around one of these nuts off, it's not a big deal. You can get them even at Ace Hardware if you needed to or a hardware store, sorry. Now, if you go to turn one of these and it's stuck inside the nut, remove it from the assembly, okay? And then you can take your time and put the nut in a vise, some PB blast, heat up the nut a little, and the screw will spin free, okay? Now, if you have the rocker arm assembly and the stud is stuck in there and it will not turn, remove the rocker arm assembly, you know, it's not the end of the day over it and put it in a vise. Okay, now don't don't get silly. Take and heat this part slightly with some map gas or propane. You don't need oxygen and acetylene. And then go ahead and break it loose and wind it up. I've had had that happen before. It's not a big deal. And they do sell the new studs and nuts if you do need them online. And you can buy a whole new rocker arm assembly if need be. So Okay, give me a second and we'll close out. All right, so that was Valve Adjustment 101. Uh, now remember a few things to go over again. I apologize for that. Make sure you never turn that crank here with your distributor out. And make sure if you're 180 out and something's not right, you check that distributor drive gear like I spoke about earlier to make sure somebody didn't put it in 180 out. If they did, it's okay just got to remember where your rotor is on number one. It'll be different. If you have a Bosch distributor or a 009 mechanical advanced distributor, your rotor is going to be in a different position than the vacuum advanced units, the SVDA and the DVDA, which I like these. Uh, but that should be about it. I hope I covered everything. Uh, if you have anything to add on to it, as always, put them in the comments section. I like when people do that because other commenters will see it and other community members may benefit by it. So I will see you over the weekend on the club meeting live chat. Don't forget about our Facebook group. And join there and feel free to. And I hope everybody has a really safe and happy weekend.